<laughs> Had to slob on the knob for the thumb. <laughs> Oh, how did I not see that's where that was going? <laughs> oh, hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jake. We are the Dirt Road Men. <laughs> Today we have Knob Creek, Hunter Proof, Bourbon. Yep. I, uh, I think this is, uh, <laughs> can you hold it together? Yeah, I can. I can. Can you, can you handle my knob? <laughs> Oh, uh, I stole that joke, but that's all right. It was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Knob Creek is uh, the the snob friendly bourbon uh, that Jim B makes. Well, it's one of them. Pretty much any of their small batch series, I think. That's okay, Seth. And his. His cigar just threw a bunch of different smells in the air. Yeah, it really did. This My brother's smoking like a chocolatey flavored cigar. It's a. Uh, it is a nice mix with this bourbon. He, I. It made it better. I'm jealous that he has a, that cigar and I don't. Yeah, that is. Yeah, this would go really well with an Isla. Yeah. So it's a really like. It's a classic bourbon. I notice more of the bite with this than I do with the Jim Beam Bonded, even though there's the same proof. Um, I get cinnamon on the nose, which I thought was weird. I wonder if this has a higher rye content. Maybe. That might be why. <clears throat> um, not why cinnamon on the nose, but why it's it tastes, yeah, it tastes more bitey, if you will. Um, definitely, like, the strongest note I get, but maybe that's because the rest are classic bourbon notes, is there's some nuttiness on the knob. <laughs> you can do it. You can get through this. I can. I already had a 20-minute uh, laughing fit today, so. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. You should have been here. Uh, Momo's here today, by the way, along with Def Seth. Hello. And uh, you should have been here when we were shooting the outro. It took Jake like a solid half an hour to get that outro out. <laughs> it's like nine seconds. Yeah. He could. I turned the camera on and he just bust up laughing. <laughs> as soon as it would come on, just, just it was bad. It was rough. Anyway, so do you, do you want to tell him about my knob? <laughs> I don't. Um, it's made by Jim Beam. It's great. It's one of their small batch series. Yeah, it's 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 you know produced Beam Suntory, Claremont, Kentucky. It's uh one of four of their small batch. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, man. Come on. <laughs> so they have four small batch series. Um, <laughs> Steve's getting up on it too. Um, I just can't even look. Do, do Book, we need to so there's to Bookers, Stephanie? there's Baco, Bakers, Basil Hayden's, and uh, Knob Creek. Knob Creek was introduced in 1992, and it was. Uh... Sorry. He got into it. I think you left part of Steve on the bottom. <laughs> Steve, slow down. That's too much knob. <sighs> We're like five years old. <laughs> you know what we need? Hmm. We need a barrel. <laughs> and stick the knob in the bubble. <laughs> I swear to God, this is a business. <laughs> but with any business, it, with all seriousness, you have to have some fun. Or else you just lose your mind and then it'll be all over the walls. That might be. We might be at the lost our mind part already. <laughs> <laughs> but, so introduced in 1992, um, it originally had a uh, nine year age statement up until around 2009. Or when they, or 2010, they released uh, the single barrel, single barrel reserve, uh, which was 120 proof. 
and it had the nine year age statement. Was that at cask strength or did they have to water it down to 120 proof? I'm not sure. It just, it, it, I'm just curious. It didn't say. I, didn't. I mean, 120 seems exact, so I imagine there's a little water. Yeah. Be some precise distilling if it wasn't. Yeah. But in 2009, they uh, informed the world that when they were predicting how much whiskey to distill for 2009, um, in two, the year 2000, uh, they were a bit low. So I imagine that they didn't have enough to meet the demands, so they quit putting an age statement so they can still put out enough whiskey to... Yeah, and I mean, as long as the flavor doesn't change, the age statement doesn't bother me. We said before the video, like, it doesn't always taste its best at eight years and a day old. Yeah. So, uh, I like, I'm perfectly okay with going for flavor over age. Now, that said, there are some flavors that you almost never get without age. Yeah. And some things, but... particularly you see that in scotch, I've found, but sometimes in bourbon as well. Um, yeah, because the alcohol... So it got, it got so popular they couldn't even keep up with demand, that's kind of cool. Yep. Well, when it, and when it was released, it was, I don't, how much was this one? Uh, this was like 36 or 38 bucks. When it was, uh... Released, it was like 15 in New York. Dang. For a nine-year-old bourbon? Yep. Wow. <laughs> so it's... We have to go back! <laughs> yes! <laughs> that's, that's nuts. But that was in, you know, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I will say of their, of their uh, small batch series, I like Booker's more than I like Knob Creek. So... Yes. <laughs> it's, um, it's been a while since I've had Booker's, mm -hmm. but I think Momo actually bought the last bottle of Booker's I had. I think that was probably the only time I've tried it. Oh, I've had two bottles. Oh. So, at, well, as in I've had it two, from two separate bottles. Because Momo's looked a lot nicer and came in a box and stuff. Mm. Mine didn't. But, uh, yeah, I don't think it's a bad bourbon. I think it's a little pricey. But I think this would be, like, a good... If, if somebody's wanting to, like, try bourbon, and they don't mind the price point, and you want to... Especially if they're, like, a, a whiskey snob and, with scotch. Mm -hmm. I think this is something that would satisfy all those... It hits all those boxes, right? Yeah. It'll satisfy the whiskey snobs, even though it's really popular. It's got all the classic bourbon flavors, and it's not bad. It just... I can't really pick out that much special about it. I mean, there's the cinnamon and the nuttiness, but those are both, like, I get nuttiness from Bird Dog. Other than that, it tastes like Jim Beam Bonded. A lot like Jim Beam Bonded. With It, it tastes like Jim Beam Bonded with a little extra flair to me. And I don't know if that flair is worth, a, like, 10 to $15 difference a bottle. I, no, not for me, anyway. I, the extra stuff in that I don't care as much for. Mm -hmm. Compared to the bonded. Now I got the mm -hmm. hiccups. You got the hiccups from the knob? No. You're just taking in the knob too fast, man. You can't get any air and your lungs are all messed up. Oh. <laughs> so, um, I bet this is going to disappoint some whiskey snobs, but I give this about a six and a half. Because it's, it's like a good Henry McKenna. Yeah. <laughs> it... Or a not... It's it's slightly better than mediocre. That's, that's what that reminds me of is the McKenna. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of Henry McKenna, and I prefer it to Henry McKenna, but also there's like a well, I guess there's only about a five dollar difference. And the cool thing about Henry McKenna was I got banana on the nose, which is a lot more impressive than cinnamon. You need a hug? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what is he doing? He's, he's he's dancing. The deaf kid's dancing. Can't even hear the music. Is there music? No. Okay. <laughs> so I give it a six and a half. What do you give it? Five. Five. You like it less than the McKenna, huh? What do I give the McKenna? Six. And the six. <laughs> it's about the same. Gotcha. 
Yeah. Um, it's, it's not bad. It's not This bad. isn't a bad bourbon. It's a... It's especially a good starter bourbon, but once you get used to bourbon notes, um, this isn't going to impress you. You know what? I'd like to retract my statement. Huh. And in a later video, like later or like after today, okay. I'd like to try it again and revise my statement. Because coming off of the other bourbon, it's just not as it, good. It, it's not holding up to... Yeah. Um... So, so you'll reserve judgment. Maybe we can yeah. A-B compare it, too, to Henry McKenna. Because that, that bottle's still sitting around. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll go, what, just we'll call it an overall six for now. Yeah. Yeah. Slightly better than average. Uh, at I, that price point, I would get Eagle Rare every single available day of the week, twice a day. So. Yeah, because I mean, when I tried it uh, in uh, oh, Bar on Mass Street, I don't remember which one, we were in a lot that night. Uh, yeah, I remember it being a lot better than this. Yeah. But it was also the last bar we were at. <laughs> that might be why. <laughs> I had a pitcher at every bar. <laughs> a pitcher of whiskey? <laughs> How are a you not dead? <laughs> a pitcher of beer. <clears throat> I want a pitcher of whiskey. <laughs> Do you have a pitcher? I'm sure I got one somewhere. I can go get we another get bottle. Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. Yeah. No, we're not putting that in with that. No, I just made it. <laughs> no. He's saying another bottle so we can fill up a pitcher with that. I'm not going it's to work gonna, today. Yeah, it's gonna be a long night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I'd be going to work tomorrow. Yeah. All right. I suppose that's good. All right. Uh, I'm Zach. I'm Jake. And we are the Dirt Road Men. Swab them up. Hey everybody, if you like this video, uh, hit a like or dislike, comment, uh, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if you really like what we're doing, uh, check us out over on Facebook where we post every day.